And today we're going to jump into one of the more bizarre astronomical mysteries from the last few years. Something that was only identified back in 2019, but also something that was officially captured decades ago. Reaching back to the middle of the last century, even before the launch of the first satellite into space. And so, in this video, we're going to explore some of the recent discoveries from a somewhat ambitious international project known as VASCO. Vanishing and appearing sources during a century of observations. A project that's trying to answer a somewhat simple question. What if something in our night skies vanished? Or I guess even more strangely, what if something appeared out of nowhere? only to disappear once again. But the main point of this project is to try to identify some of the bizarre discoveries in a lot of really old data, focusing on some of the older observations from the 1940s and 1950s, such as the Palomar Observatory Sky Survey, also known as POS-1. But also comparing this to some of the most recent observations from the Gaia telescope and from the Pan stars. And so let's discuss some of these most recent discoveries and I guess some of these most recent mysteries, but specifically focus on the science and the potential explanations, making sure that we basically avoid any hype and any speculations. Although here I wanted to hype up one little thing. As I mentioned, one of these recent studies was based on POS-1. The first Palomar Sky Survey that was actually carried out a few years before the launch of the first satellite by the Soviet Union. We're talking about Sputnik. And so this survey was conducted before 1957. And this by itself is absolutely critical because any unusual light source detected in these old images that may disappear or reappear cannot be possibly some kind of a satellite reflection or some kind of an emission from a human-made object. Which is, by the way, one of the biggest problems in astronomy today and why it's becoming more and more difficult to conduct astronomy every year. For example, here's what the image from 2021 looked like from a typical ground-based observatory. And so even five years ago, this was already pretty bad. But it's only gotten worse and worse every single year. Yet here we have these images collected before first satellites, allowing researchers to explore these so-called pre-Sputnik anomalies that seem to have been discovered in a recent study. And although this research does touch on some truly intriguing possibilities, including what I guess one might call exotic explanations, yeah, I guess we're talking about aliens, today our focus is going to be on pure science and, of course, pure evidence. Evidence presented in a few studies in a description that's of course essential for a skeptical and rigorous approach to this unusual fascinating puzzle. But I guess first let's start with this project and what it's really for. So, Vasco. At its core, it's about identifying various transients or various bright flashes in the night skies, focusing on events with a typically relatively short time scales, anywhere from a few seconds to possibly a few months. And this, of course, includes a lot of classical events such as nova, supernova, gamma ray bursts, and more recently discovered fast radio bursts. But also, of course, a lot of really bizarre phenomena we've discussed in a lot of different videos in the last few years, many of which are still unexplained. But this project only has one goal, trying to identify similar transients that seem to be visible in some of the older surveys, but may be absent in some of the modern ones. Or vice versa, invisible before, visible now. You can read more about the methodology and the actual science behind this in one of the studies in the description. But the overall scale of this project is absolutely immense. Because here scientists started by comparing hundreds of millions of different objects, which of course required some kind of an automated search. And a lot of, a lot of filtering. But in some of the previous videos about this project, we've discussed some of the initial discoveries. At first it was a few hundred objects, then it was just over a thousand, and now by using this new survey, POS1, they seem to have discovered nearly 300,000 individual sources that were present in one of the surveys but were then absent in the other one. But so far most of these have already been explained. For example, quite a lot of them have been discovered in the infrared catalogs, meaning that they might be just very, very cold objects, not easily seen in the optical light. Also, quite a lot of them turn out to be known asteroids. Some of them seem to be variable objects that were just caught at the faintest magnitude during modern surveys and were just much, much brighter before. And quite a lot of them were just artifacts or defects usually because this was all stored on photographic plates or because these artifacts were then added during the scanning process. And for those of you who may be just a little bit younger, so here's a typical photographic plate. This is basically how we used to make pictures. And as you can see even here, there are quite a lot of artifacts and quite a lot of little dots. But some of these objects were actually just stars. 
Stars that moved to a different location over several decades and were then rediscovered in some of the additional surveys. But despite of this, after many explanations and a lot of filtering, the team was still left with approximately 5400 unidentified transients. Transients whose nature was not entirely clear and that seemed to represent some kind of a mystery. And though most of them could be associated with very large amplitude variable stars or even flare stars, or possibly some kind of a supernova that were missed previously, right now there are still a lot of unexplained objects, especially because some of these objects, and the ones that appeared as a tiny point, would have been extremely unlikely to be a supernova and don't seem to match known stars either. And while well, overall this analysis is very intriguing and very thorough, and leaves us with quite a few of these unexplained disappearing objects. But back in 2024, or I guess last year from when I'm making this video, there was one potential explanation that did make quite a lot of sense. This was one of the central counter-arguments surrounding some of these unidentified transients. This was in regards to their image profiles. And so here, Hambly and Blair suggested that certain transients seem to exhibit narrow and round profiles, implying that quite a lot of them were actually the result of what's known as the emulsion flaw. This refers to an imperfection in the light-sensitive layer of film that can sometimes affect the final image. And though this can be the result of manufacturing defect or just improper development, in reality it can be caused by basically anything. But in one of the recent studies, the original Vasco researchers decided to provide their own counter-argument, and specifically in regards to how many of these images seem to be captured. In astronomy, when it comes to long-term exposure, generally various objects will become blurry over time. And this blurring comes from three main sources. First, atmospheric sources, such as turbulence in the air, which will make stars appear just a little bit blurry and a little bit wobbly. Second, the vibrations inside a telescope, such as for example from the windy conditions, can also blur some of the images just a little bit. And third, there might be some tracking errors that usually lead to a slight drift, producing additional blurring. And so if you combine all three of these sources, these blurring effects will actually accumulate, making the object appear slightly disturbed. However, if there is a source that seems to appear extremely quickly and disappear afterwards, so for example some kind of a flash that lasts for just a second, instead it would experience a frozen snapshot, appearing much sharper and more circular, compared to a typical star in the same long exposure place. And so the overall argument in the study suggests that this might not be a flow inside the photographic plates, but rather some kind of an unexpected support for this being very short flashes from some kind of an unresolved source. With the analysis by the Vasco team suggesting that the large fraction of these objects seem to show systematically lower elongation and were much sharper and more rounded, implying some kind of a bursty event. But this was just their first counter-argument. They also provided something else known as the Earth's shadow test. And that one is quite intriguing. Here the test provides a powerful way to distinguish between phenomena caused by some kind of a reflection from the sun and maybe those that are just defects in the photographic plates. And the logic here is straightforward. If this is indeed something that's reflecting from the sun, then sometimes, if this object is close enough to Earth and if this object passes through the Earth's shadow, it should not be visible when it passes in certain locations in the night skies, mostly because it would no longer be illuminated by the sun. However, if this is due to some kind of a photographic plate defect, or if this object produces its own light, here the overall visibility should not be affected by the Earth's shadow. And so to try to see what's happening here, the Vasco team analyzed 100,000 different transients from their sample, discovering a somewhat significant absence of transients inside the shadow of planet Earth. And so for example, at an altitude of 80,000 kilometers away from the surface, where the Earth's shadow would cover only a small fraction of the sky, they expected 340 transients, but observed only 79. And this was a somewhat profound statistical difference, actually with a sigma of 12.7, which is very significant, implying that whatever they were looking at seemed to be affected by the Earth's shadow, with these objects disappearing when they were on the dark side. And to the scientists behind the study, this essentially contradicted that this is just a defect inside the photographic plates, or some kind of an other instrumental issue resulting from the development. Instead, their data suggests that at least a third of these objects seem to be caused by something highly reflective not so far from planet Earth. And amongst thousands of these transients, multiple point-like transients appeared on a single photographic plate 
and also seem to be aligned along a relatively narrow band. And so while finding individual transients is already rare, finding several of them kind of lined up seems to be even more unusual. And so at the end, the team identified 83 initial candidate alignments with three or more points in a single line. And at least five candidates seem to have four or more aligned transients. And well, the obvious question is, so what exactly is causing this alignment and what can this possibly be? Well, right now the conclusion is that there is no known astrophysical or instrumental explanation to account for most of these events, which is where the exotic explanations start to come into play. And that's because, once again, all of this was seen before 1957, before Sputnik was launched. And here the authors do explore the possibility that these events could be fast reflections from reflective artificial objects in some kind of a geosynchronous orbit above the Earth's atmosphere. And so the conclusion from most of the studies by these authors is that we're essentially seeing some kind of a UFO object, or basically aliens visiting Earth prior to the launch of Sputnik. But now I guess so let's discuss the other more skeptical side and also discuss some of the potential more likely explanations for what we're actually seeing. And the first one is even provided in the study itself. This is still very likely some kind of a plate defect. And here it does seem to correlate with something else that's not just UFO sightings. It actually seems to have direct correlations with the historical nuclear test dates. And it just so happens that nuclear fallout or a lot of charged particles do have a tendency to affect photographic plates. For example, alpha particles and protons usually cause silver halide crystals to transform inside photographic plates, causing them to produce various dot-like formations, some which are very sharp and very circular. As a matter of fact, some of the first particles were even detected using this technique. And though in this case it's quite undeniable that the Vasco project seems to have discovered some kind of a novel observational anomaly, even though it's a bit uncertain exactly what caused these anomalies, jumping to a conclusion that this is aliens or UFOs is once again maybe just a little bit premature. And in this case, I wanted to be particularly skeptical because the main researchers behind the study were kind of talking about UFOs and aliens even before the Vasco project started and even before any of these observations. And so here, just to quote someone on Reddit, after being unable to explain what these transients are, the authors jump to the conclusion that this is aliens. So it's a classical case of having a conclusion before even starting to harvest data. They were actually trying to find aliens even before they started to collect the data. And unfortunately, that's just not good science. And one of the bigger criticisms I've already read about this is in regards to the statistical analysis. Even though it might appear to be robust, it doesn't seem to be that robust after all. Right now, there's a concern that the analysis seems to have been done on the per image basis without accounting for the total sky surveyed, which would be critical in a statistical context. And some alignments, like the five point alignment, seems to be questionable and seems to even imply some kind of an overinterpretation or even tuning of data just to match the expectations. Or just to rephrase this once again, maybe bad science. Likewise, the correlation argument that a lot of these transients seem to be less frequent inside the Earth's shadow seems to apply broadly to all transients, but may not hold statistically for the aligned subset used in this study. Once again, weakening the statistical claim, with pretty much most of the criticisms so far just highlighting that there seems to be a lot of bias, a lot of preconceptions and somewhat dubious calculations, with pretty much most scientific reviewers right now agreeing that the statistical evidence is very insufficient. Which is why I actually have to mention that so far, this study has not been peer-reviewed yet and has not been officially published. At the moment, this remains a draft. But a draft that's nevertheless intriguing and, of course, thought-provoking. Mostly because the researchers behind the study have been discovering these anomalous events in several different surveys and surveys conducted over different time frames. With the only thing uniting all of those previous surveys basically being those photographic plates. And so even though we have some exotic explanations, right now the most likely and the potentially easiest explanation still seems to suggest that this is maybe some kind of an artifact from the photographic plates. Something that these plates were notorious for because many of them contain imperfections, usually as a result of manufacturing issues or even storage, and plates that were never really meant to be analyzed that thoroughly. And I mean, even if you look at the most famous photographic plate in existence, the one that Hubble used to essentially discover the whole universe, the video about this should be in the description by the way, even on this plate you can see a lot of deformations and a lot of bizarre anomalies. 
And so as much as I would love to believe that this is some kind of an alien artifact orbiting the planet in the 1950s, right now the most likely explanation is really that this is just an issue with the photographic plate. Something that might even be recreated in some of the future studies, but that's just my opinion for now. Because at the moment, it's still actually unknown exactly what's happening here, with the exact nature of these dots essentially remaining unknown and warranting further investigation. A much more natural explanation would probably involve some kind of an astrophysical object we still don't understand, or, as I mentioned before, maybe just radiation produced by various nuclear explosions in the 1950s. And so, for example, by using some kind of a larger and more systematic data set, it might be possible to confirm some of these phenomena, especially if they're discovered in additional surveys. But much more importantly, researchers here would have to use a much more advanced statistical analysis, such as for example a multivariate analysis and machine learning classifiers, in order to differentiate real transients from potential artifacts or random fluctuations. Likewise, it would be important for additional researchers to try to recreate the results using the same data, just to confirm their findings and to reduce potential confirmational bias. Which actually would be really important because right now, pretty much most of these studies seem to mostly contain the same authors. And so in the end, by applying more rigorous techniques and by reducing statistical uncertainty while also mitigating personal bias, researchers can definitely create something that's a lot more scientifically sound. Because unfortunately, as it stands, despite this being an exciting and somewhat unusual discovery, there are still just too many uncertainties and too many biased preconceptions that unfortunately do not produce a good scientific study. But as before, we're definitely going to discuss Vasco project once again, just to see what's going to happen with the results here, and just to see if there are some additional conclusions. And so until future studies or until the analysis from someone else, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a general membership that grants you early access. Alternatively, you can buy the wonderful person t-shirt in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.